Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet the straw flower hexagon tote. These straw flower hexagons are a pattern that I have um, made a video for previously, and this video is going to show you how to put the hexagons together, seam everything up, add a top edge, and finally add the handles to the top of the bag. There's already a video for the hexagons, so we're going to go ahead and learn how to put the bag together. The finished bag I have here measures about 9 inches wide, and from the bottom of the bag to the top of the handles, it's about 13 inches tall. I've also sewn some handles to the bag, and so these handles are super easy to make. Um, there's nothing fancy or no counting involved. We're just going to sew these right onto the bag. And then I have these um, buttons that I've added. I did pink on this side to match the pink and the hexagons. And I've done green on this side to match the green. So let's get started. For this project, you're going to need some cotton dishcloth yarn. You can also substitute with any worsted weight yarn of your choice. I used uh, Lily Sugar and Cream. This is by uh, the Yarnspirations brand. And I used Hot Pink, Black Current, Mod Green, and Hot Green for my color combination in, in case you want to replicate the same um, colors. Also, you'll need a pair of scissors, a 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook, a tapestry needle, and as an option, you can add some buttons to your handles. And that is totally optional. They're only decorative. They're not functional. The handles will be sewn onto the bag. So the, you can just add these if you want to, if you have some handy. And I happen to have um, some in the similar uh, colors as what I would be using for the bag. So what you're going to do, you're going to make 10 hexagons. Now this video is going to show you how to put the bag together, how to seam the hexagons together, how to work the top decorative edge, how to crochet the handles, how to add the handles, and how to finish off the bag. I have a full video tutorial for this hexagon. This is called the Straw Flower Hexagon. It is one of um, my free Fiberflux patterns, and I have a full video tutorial, and I will be linking that tutorial up to this video. So what you're going to need to do before you begin, we can scoot all of this out of the way for a moment, is you're going to want to crochet 10 of these. Now I did mine in the same four colors, but when I did each of my rounds, I just switched up you know, the order in which I did them. So the result was um, hexagons that match and coordinate, but they're all a little bit different and unique. And when the bag is put together, they look very pretty all together. So I try to kind of mix them up a little bit and, um, you know, for, for a multicolor effect. So what you're going to do is make 10 hexagons and then you'll want to, um, weave in all of the ends. I have all of my ends to weave in still. So when I made my hexagons, I wove the ends in the center rounds as I went, but you'll want to weave in this with your tapestry needle. So I can just show you how to do that really quick. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be putting all of our hexagons together. So you'll want to make your 10 hexagons and then you'll weave all the ends in and then you'll be ready to seam them together to construct the bag. Okay, so I just went in one direction. If you're weaving in an end of a certain color, like I'm doing purple, just stay in the purple area when you do that, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and weave all my ends in and we'll rejoin in just a moment and I'll show you how to seam all these hexagons together. So once we've woven all of our ends in, our hexagons are ready to be laid out and then seamed, okay? So we can get these ends out of the way. And you can save these for stuffing toys or pillows and or put them out for the birds in the spring. I like to keep mine in a large like zip top bag, okay? You'll also want to select a color for seaming. I'm gonna be doing the handles in this, uh, this is the black current 
colorway in case you're wondering. Um, I'm gonna do the handles in this color, so I'm gonna do the seam in this color as well to kind of pull it all together. So you're gonna need the same 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook and then whatever color you want to use to seam. Now you can mix it up, it's totally up to you. Um, we're gonna be doing a single crochet seam. We're gonna be, the seam will be very visible in between all the hexagons. If you like something more invisible than what I'm going to be doing, I, I'm, the, the seam is going to show. So if you want something to be more invisible, then you can take your tapestry needle and some yarn and just um, sew them together, whip stitch them together. And I have a tutorial for how to whip stitch if you uh, need to learn how to do that as well. So let's lay out our hexagons and then we'll get to work seaming up our hexagons, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to try and avoid putting two colors side by side, two of the same color. See how these are both finished? The, the last round was done in green. You wanna avoid putting two of the same colors side by side, unless you've made all of your hexagons the same color. So if you did all of your hexagons in this exact order for all 10, you can put them together and that would look very pretty as well. Okay, so let's get these laid out. We'll do one and two. three and four. Again, I'm trying my best to mix up these colors. Okay, let's put one down here. We'll put a purple up here. Okay, and then we have two here. So we have two, then a row of three, and then a row of two more. Then we're just gonna have one here, and then I'm left with a green and a green. So as you can see, we have a green side by side. So let's try and switch up this green somewhere else. So we might need to shift them around. It's kind of like a puzzle. So now these are together. So let's, um, let's pull this one out of the middle and just switch them up. You'll definitely have to do this with your hexagons as well. Okay, so let's check our work. Now we don't have any of the same color side by side. So you might have to do a little switcheroo like I did. But once you get them all the way you want them, now we're ready to seam, okay? So grab whatever color you've chosen. Again, I'm using the same color as my handle so it all coordinates together. So we also wanna double check that all of the hexagons are facing upward. So if you have one flipped, like this, it's gonna show, it's gonna stick out. It's not gonna look the same. So make sure they're all facing upward, okay? I'm gonna be working from this side and work my way over, okay? So what we're gonna do, now our seam is gonna show. So we're going to, to hold, you can grab the first two hexagons and sandwich them together, but make sure that the right side is facing out and the right side is facing out and the wrong sides are flipped in, okay? So what we're gonna do is insert our hook so we have a flat top here. We will be working our seam into this flat top only, okay? So we're gonna insert our hook into this first stitch in the top right corner, the first stitch in the top corner. See how they're sandwiched and they're all lined up. Then we're gonna take our yarn, our seaming yarn, and then bring it through both layers, okay? And then you can just tie that right on. Now, if you can incorporate as many of these tails in as you work, um, that'll save you a lot of work at the end of this project. Okay, so what you're gonna do is insert your hook back into where you tied that on, bring up a loop, and then chain one, okay? Then you're gonna insert your hook into the next stitch and the next stitch of the next layer, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, and bring it through both loops. Okay, we're gonna do this all the way across the top, working into both layers. Wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the first loop. Just make sure everything is lined up nice and neat. It really makes a big difference to do nice, neat finish work. Now you'll arrive at some of these spaces. 
you can work your single crochet into the chain that's at the top or right into the space. I'm going to work mine right into the space for my hexagon. It's totally up to you. Okay, and then in each stitch all the way across. Okay, we're just going in both layers with our single crochet. Yarn around hook, bring up a loop, yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. Okay, now a lot of people are not into seaming because it takes a good amount of time, but definitely make sure that you spend some time doing this um, nice and neat because it's going to make a difference because you've made all these really fantastic hexagons and you want to show them off in the best manner possible. So make sure that you definitely take your time with your seaming. And it does take time to seam up things, but um, it's definitely worth it to try to do nice, neat work. Okay. So we're at the end here. Now I'm going to show you, we're going to lay our piece down and get it all straightened out. Might need to give it a little tug to just kind of straighten everything out. So you can see now we're doing a purple and we're working um, purple on purple, but you can see it, it leaves a little seam and that seam will be more visible as we start to add some of these other colors. So next let's um, lay this back down. We have our first one seamed. Now our next green one is going to kind of fit into here like a puzzle. Okay. So let's grab this one and we're going to sandwich it up against this purple and we're just going to keep going with our hexagon okay so just go in one layer go in the top right you know that corner of this first screen hexagon that we're going to be adding on bring up a loop wrap yarn around hook bring it through both loops we're just going to do this all the way across okay Go through both layers just like that. I'm going to continue working across into um, both layers of my hexagons and then I'm going to show you how to add some more hexagons on as well. So I went ahead and seamed this part. Now we're kind of at a dead end so I'm going to go ahead and fasten off. Now we could work a stitch down to this next area but this part these sides are going to be seamed also so we don't want to have double seams and bulk. So the best thing to do would just be to fasten off. So I'm going to fasten off in the purple. Now, if you notice, this uh, connection here has not been done yet. So we'll want to go ahead and seam that as well. And then we're going to be seaming here and then come down and then seam these three and this one. So we're going to seam a few more together and then we're going to kind of um, rejoin when it's time to um, when we have our, our piece all seamed, we're going to be folding it and seaming the sides as well. So let's, um, we fastened off here. So let's go ahead and work, let's do these next. Because so we can go, we can go all the way across here. Okay. So again, the right sides are facing out. So then just tie that on. We have our yarn. We're gonna we went in both layers of that that corner. Always start at those corners. Bring the new yarn through the seaming yarn, tie it right on. Okay. Again, we'll just work single crochets right into um, each stitch, both layers. So just bring up a loop and it, just like before, chain one. Then we'll work a single crochet in each stitch all the way across this top flat edge here. Okay working in both layers. So I'm just going to go across and then when we get to where we want to put this green one, I'll show you how to make that transition. Okay, so I worked this next side and then we're going to go from this green joining onto this dark green. We joined the pink one. Now we're going to slide over and join this bright green one as well. Okay, so you can just Pick that up. I like to pick it up and just lay it right back down where um, it's supposed to go. So you can go right in that top right corner again, top corner of that other one, and then just work the same thing. Just work your single crochet 
seam all the way across. Okay, just going in both layers. And then we're gonna do that. So let me lay this down for a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and continue seaming. Now there's some areas where you might need to cut the yarn, fasten off and rejoin in a different area, like this area up here that I mentioned before. But we're just gonna keep doing that and reseam or seam the rest of our hexagons together. So once I get these all joined, then we're going to um, learn how to uh, fold the bag and seam the sides and finish constructing our bag. So now that we've seamed all of the hexagons together, and again, we use the single crochet uh, seam. So we have this very decorative um, seam that looks um, almost kind of like a stained glass. Um, so what we're gonna do is turn our piece this way and then flip it over and then make these hexagons meet at the top, just like that. So then we're gonna seam our bag starting from the bottom and going up, but we're gonna fold this hexagon in and if you flip it, you can, you can see it kind of fits like a puzzle. See that? So we're gonna start down here and seam up and around and finish off at this top right corner. Then we're gonna start from this bottom left corner and go up and then fold this hexagon in, seam around and end at this top left corner. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna start at the bottom right corner of the bag. So this bottom hexagon, we're, we're gonna find See these corner spaces, you can line them up, fold it in half, and look for those two stitches at the very bottom left corner. Then take your purple seaming yarn, insert your hook into those two very bottom stitches, in one, in the other. Might be a little bit fiddly, but that's okay. Grab your purple yarn or whatever color you're using to seam and draw it through both layers, just like we've been doing. So just bring it through, just like that, and then just tie it right on. Okay, now we're ready to seam. We're gonna seam it the same exact way we've seamed our hexagons together, but we're just gonna be seaming up the sides. So we're gonna go across, and then we're gonna, again, like we're gonna fold this hexagon in, flip it over and seam around and then back up. Okay, so just work single crochets all the way across the same way we've been doing. Okay, I'm just working that very last single crochet to seam up the side and then I'm just going to cut the yarn and go ahead and fasten off. And here is what the first side of the bag looks like. It's shaping up very nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and seam the other side, and then when I'm done doing that, we'll rejoin and I'll show you how to do this top edge. To give our bag a more finished look, now we've done the seaming in purple, and we're gonna be adding purple handles later. So I'm also gonna work a round of single crochet stitches around the top edge of our bag, just to give it a more finished look and kind of pull it all together. So what you wanna do is get the same yarn that you did your seaming, and then we're going to start at one of these uh, sides here. So go ahead, this is uh, one of these corner spaces. I'm gonna just tie my yarn. You can tie it into a corner space or a stitch, whatever's at the edge here by our seam. So go ahead and just tie that new yarn right on. And then we're also gonna weave this tail in as we go along to save ourselves a step at the end. So reach back in with your hook, bring up a loop and chain one. Okay, now we're at the seam. So when you get to the seam, if you could kind of just turn it over a little bit and work right into that top little stitch of our seam and just work right into that. Okay, so we're just gonna continue all the way around with single crochet stitches. So in the first stitch or, or corner space, whatever you have to work with on your particular bag, just gonna work all the way across. I also incorporated the seam. 
because if we kind of skipped over it, it would uh, create a gap and you'd have purple and then like a little bit of green and then the purple would continue. So we also want to incorporate, um, just throw a single crochet right in that seam as well. Okay. So we're just working into each stitch and chain space. I just worked into the chain space in between each one of these clusters of the hexagon. So we're just working single crochets all the way around. So I'm going to continue working my single crochets. And then when we get towards the end of this round, we'll rejoin and finish off the bag. And then we'll be ready to start our handles. Let me get my hook out of the way just to show you what we have so far. It kind of continues this purple edging. So I'm just coming around to the other side where we began. I'm going to just close the round off with a slip stitch to close it. Okay. So at this point we can cut the yarn and fasten off. And then our bag looks pretty good. It has the top edge. So now all of these little hexagons are framed in the same way. So all we need to do now to finish off the bag is to weave in this end and then we're ready for the home stretch of our project, the handles. So just take your yarn and your tapestry needle and just weave it in and just try the best you can to stay in the purple area of this edge here. You don't want to go down into the green because it'll stick out. So just go in one direction, come back in the other direction, just weave that very last tail in. If you have any other yarn ends at this point, go ahead and weave those in as well. And then just trim. Okay, so we're going to be adding the handles. I'm just going to get everything straightened out here. So our bag is looking pretty good. Looks nice and colorful. Everything's edged and framed nicely. So we're going to um, add the handles. Now the handles are just sewn right on. So we're going to be making two uh, single crochet strips and those will serve as our handles. I chose the single crochet stitch because um, it's tighter and it's nice and sturdy. So let me show you how to do the handle. It's super, super easy. And later we're going to be adding buttons. Now I found at the beginning of this video, I had some um, other buttons, but I did come across these hexagon shaped buttons in my button collection. So I Obviously, we're going to use these because they're the same shape as our hexagons in our bag. Um, and we'll be adding those one later, and those are purely decorative. So if you don't want to add buttons or you don't have a button that's quite right, you can just leave that part out. And the, the regular handles just sewn right on look just as pretty. Okay, so what we're going to do now is work the handle. So what you're going to do is put a slip knot on your hook. and then chain five. To make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, and five. Now, this loop here does not count. In the second chain from the hook, so one and two, work a single crochet. Insert the hook into the chain, bring up a loop, yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. Work a single crochet in each chain across, Just like that okay you're just going to keep doing that over and over so chain one turn your work and then work a single crochet in the first stitch single crochet in the next stitch single crochet in the next stitch and in the last stitch all the way across okay now just repeat this row until your handles are as long as you want them to be. Now you can make your handle long, make it like a, a long handled tote, or you can make them shorter, depending on the person who will be using the bag. Um, an adult, obviously you wanna make the handles longer for someone else, or if you wanna just carry it 
as a handle, you can make your handle shorter. Now I've gone ahead and made the handles. My handles are about 13 inches long, and I just wanna show you what they're gonna look like when they're on. So you're just gonna, we're gonna put it at the top of each of these hexagons, just like that. So that's what our handle's gonna be. I did mine a little bit shorter, just because um, I thought it looked really cute and it, um, a littler person could use this bag. This isn't a very um, big bag, so I put smaller handles on this, but obviously make your handles as long as you want them to be. So we're just gonna sew them on just like that. Okay, so let's get our tapestry needle and I'm gonna move this little practice swatch. We can just, this little handle we completed. Now I've also woven the tails in on my handles, but if you have longer handles, um, if you have, I mean, longer tails, you can actually use that tail to sew it onto your um, bag. So you can put the handle on the inside of your bag if you don't want it to show, or you can put it on the outside. I'm gonna go ahead and put mine on the outside because later we're going to be adding a little decorative button on top. Okay, so just grab a piece of yarn, oh, I don't know, about 12 inches long, and cut. You wanna make sure you sew these handles on really, really well, and make sure it's a matching piece of yarn. So we're just going to place the handle. I'm not gonna go down in this green area too much. I still want this really pretty hexagon to show. So just in this top point, this cluster here, gives a nice sturdy base to put our handle. So I'm just gonna put it right over top of that and you can still see all the nice stitch work that we've done. Okay, so just place your handle where you want it to go. And then come up from the back. We're just gonna stitch all around the edge of our bag. Okay, you can leave a little tail. We'll tie that together at the end. I'm just gonna do a few stitches all the way around. Get nice and secure. Go up from the back and then come back down. all the way around. We're kind of creating a little square. Okay, and make sure you're going through both layers. Just like that. And then let's see if we're back where we started. Yes, okay. So all I'm gonna do is take our tail from when we started and pull the tapestry needle out and then just tie those two pieces of yarn together. Now my one tail is pretty short. <laughs> so I'll just tie it the best you can. And then you can trim or weave those ends in when you're finished. Okay, so let's bring the handle up and over. Now make sure your handle doesn't have a twist in it. Okay, just make sure it comes up and over like that. And then you're you know, you can flip it in or out any way you want. Okay, so we're just gonna do the same thing. We're just covering that very top little cluster, okay? So I am gonna cut a new piece of yarn. I'm afraid my other one is too short now. Go ahead and thread that and sew the other side. Okay, so just come up from the back. Again, we're gonna just do the same thing. Leave a little tail so you can tie it on at the end. And then just go all around. All around, we're kind of making a square, a little kind of boxing it in. I'm gonna come around there. There we go. Okay, now you're going through multiple layers. So you might have to wiggle <clears throat> the needle a little bit. Okay, we're gonna just come up. Whenever I'm making a bag, the handle part is always very exciting because it means your bag is almost finished. Okay, so we're right back where we started and we're just gonna do the same thing. Flip it out 
or inside out, I guess. And remove your tapestry needle and then just tie it tight. And we'll weave those ends in also. Make sure you're weaving the purple into the purple when you do weave that in. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be weaving this in, but I have a little bit of excess here. So now I'm ready to add these little decorative buttons and then you'll just repeat the handle on the other side. Um, okay, so now we're ready to add the buttons. Okay, so we're ready to add the buttons. The handle is on, the ends are woven in, and I've threaded a tapestry needle. I'm gonna do, I have two pink and two green. So I'm gonna do the two pink on one side and the two green on the other. So I know this is nitpicky of me, but when you look at the, um, the hexagons, the points are pointing upward. So I'm gonna try to mimic that with my button. Now, obviously you can use any button you like. I just have these hexagons and they seemed um, totally perfect for this project. I'm using the same purple yarn just to keep everything kind of matchy. And I'm just gonna come up from behind. I'm going through a lot of layers here. Um, I've already tested my tapestry needle and it passes through the buttonhole just fine. But make sure that this button is centered. These plastic buttons can sometimes be a little bit slippery, okay? So just get it nice and centered on there. It seems to want to shift on me. Come up from the back. Again, we're going through lots of layers. You might have to really pull that yarn through. Okay, so our button is on. It looks very, very cute. Okay, so you can go a few more times if you want to, but because this button is decorative, um, I'm not super concerned about it. Just get it tacked on there and get a nice knot in the back. And then you can take your tapestry needle. Now I used a larger one to weave in my ends and I switched to the smaller one to do the button. Depending on your button, you might have to do the same thing. Okay, so just weave in the end and again, just stay in the purple area. Come in one direction, come back in the other direction with that tapestry needle. Everything is getting pretty thick in the handle area here. Okay, and then trim. And then you'll just do the same thing for this, this other tail here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and sew the other button on as well as the other handle and the green buttons for the other side. And then we'll rejoin in just a moment. So I went ahead and sewed both handles onto our tote bag and we did pink buttons, hexagon buttons at the top here and green hexagon buttons at the bottom and they both match this multicolor hexagon collection we have here. So that is how you crochet the straw flower hexagon tote. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiverr Flux video updates. Thanks again.